Hello, and yes, you are back with the crew. Thank you so much uh, for being back with us here today. Today, as you can see, this is the title of this video. I have a 40,000 foot view of what actually the stable coin, which Ripple has created or creating, clearly they've been working on this for a while. This isn't something they just, hey, I got an idea. Let's make a stable coin. This is something I've been working on for a long time. Um, those of you who have been around the space, uh, I got in, started studying in 2016. And for the first two or three years, I didn't invest in uh, XRP. I thought that uh, they were a banker's coin and they are the cabal or the bad guys and the situate may still be the case and that's kind of what this video is about it's difficult to come full circle or a 180 if you will from those opinions that i formed a long time ago to where i finally came to the point a year or two later i think it was 2018 or whatever it was that i said no no, no this coin is very important we need to start buying this thing this is a this is a project that is whether or not you like the players involved, whether or not you think it's the way the world should go, whether that nobody ever sits down and takes inventory and says, hey, Mr. Smith and Jones, what do you think the world should be tomorrow? OK, let's do that. No, that's never the case of what we do with the financial networks in particular. One of the interesting little facts that a lot of people haven't uh most of the XRP army, and all of us know this one fact, but of these 50 nations, yes, 50 nations, and many different governments are accepting of, okay, Ripple and one day the use of XRP. One of their big issues is, is they want to make sure that they're tied to value because if you're just... I. Japan, okay, and you're using the yen, you need the strength of the whole world. Otherwise, everybody passes you by in trade value. So you need something that says, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm connected to this. I know the BRICS nations, we talk about it, are trying to link it to, to commodities. And the commodities are a great way to link strength to your currencies. However, they're terribly volatile and you know the oil crisis or not you know now there's a glut and then they you know all of a sudden we found all kinds of gold under the ocean whatever the situation might be those commodities fluctuate right this is the big problem with bitcoin bitcoin has way too much velocity to be a global currency at this point that maybe 10 20 30 years down the road that could be i don't even think then because it's more a storage of wealth what do you need in case you're trying to create a stable coin, right? It's right in the name, stable coin. Well, you need a whole bag of assets. You need a whole group of people that agree, we like that, we trust it, it's decentralized, we understand it, Ripple doesn't own it, they don't control it, it's above board, Everybody knows the rules, the regs. I have been studying the stablecoin for a while now, a couple of years, the stablecoin. In other words, Tether. Tether's got some problems. People don't like who uh, got involved with it. People don't like who created it. But the bottom line is it's still buying treasuries. So it's going to be very hard for them to get, okay, well, those, those aren't any good anymore. We're going to get rid of those. Are they going to try and ban them outside of the U.S.? They keep making that mistake. I think that's a very big mistake because what you're trying to do is get a global network. You're trying to get a decentralized, fair system. And now you're going to go ahead and wield the sword and, and, and chop off these people because they were entrepreneurs, because they were creators, because they were capitalists, because they wanted to create a different system outside of yours, outside of your control. This should be praised. This should be looked upon as, okay, well, if they're good at what they do, they'll succeed. 
That's capitalism. That's what we need, a fair free market. What we don't need is governments, committees, and agencies coming in and saying, oh, no, no, you can't do that because you once sold uh, $5 to the Russian man one time. That's what I'm really down on about some of these stable coins. Now let's get to why I really love Ripple stablecoin, which is going to be, I don't know, who's going to be StableX or, you know, USDX or whatever it's going to be, right? That's going to be a brilliant day because they've created honesty, fairness, decentralization, and trust with all of these banks forever and ever. Like I've been talking about, so I've been studying since 16 because it was a banker's coin. They already have all those transactions in the background. They already have everybody who's looking forward to, hey, that's a banking company. Those people deal in crypto. They deal in banks. I trust them. I understand them. Let's invite them to our country. Let's invite them in. Let's see what product they have. What products do they have? They have XRP and they have now stablecoin. We like stablecoin. Why? Because our people want stable coins because they want to be tied to, like I said, either a commodity, which I really don't think is going to be the way of the future. Two or three years ago, a lot of us really believed that they were going to link this to gold and silver. I'm, I'm not so sure that that's going to be the case anymore. There's still a lot of people that believe in that. That's all to be played. We don't know that yet. We don't know for sure where that's going. Because it's not just about what they tell us we need to use. Often it's about what the people accept and what we use. What social media believes in. And what the members of the committee at the top forcing it down upon the people doesn't always succeed. Trust me, does not always succeed. You and I have a bigger part in this than you think. But it's so much easier for somebody to work with a company like Ripple or XRP and using XRP for this stablecoin network. It's massive, guys. I'm telling you, within six months of then having this stable coin, it can be in 200 different banks, 50 different nations. That's quick. That's really fast. Because the bankers I've known in my life and the bankers I still speak with don't have the energetic exuberance that you and I do for the future change. They're old guys. They're the stinky rooms with cigars and scotch. They don't want change. They want to keep the rules the way they are. That's why these committees in D.C. are doing the things they are that you and I wouldn't even approve of. I mean, some of the representation that's going on in, in Washington, D.C. is ridiculous. They don't even written like, how is it you can say that when we know that you're lying to us? How is it a politician can lie or pretend to not know the truth as many times as they are? It's absurd. They can't, right? Now, I know I'm rambling on here a bit, but I want to get to a point. And the point is, when you have the people involved, okay, like Ripple does, they've set the table. They've set the table for somebody other than Circle. And you can say whatever you want about Circle. I'm not a huge fan of the company. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Tether. I'm not a huge fan of anybody. I'm not trying to wave anybody's banner. What I'm trying to say is, I think, this is my opinion, Ripple is more independent than either one of those two. Far more independent has far more global trust, has far more liquidity, and will end up being the big player in the room. And when I heard that they were going to be working with Ethereum or on the Ethereum network, I said, done. We're done. That's done. You don't say, oh, hey, we're getting, by the way, we'd like to one day work with Ethereum. No, they've already been working with Ethereum, and that's already a done deal. We already know who the corporate players are in Ethereum and what connections they have, and how Ethereum once has been 
the chosen one, if you will, for corporate business. Corporations have to all have some place of agreement. They can dis disagree on virtually everything around the table, but they have to have a place to come together. And if your place to come together, okay, is a stable coin, isn't it interesting that Ethereum isn't running a stable coin? Isn't it interesting that Ripple's running one for them? Now, I want to switch channels just a little bit because that's really just painting the broad picture of old banking systems that we know are changing. And whether or not you could say that they had this plan for 20 or 30 or 40 years, and I really do believe they are, they have. All you got to do is look at the letter X. Let's do a little research about the letter X and what it means to the Western world all the way back 100 years ago. There was a book written. That's, it's, anyway, that's kind of more for my Patreon channel. and uh, But that letter has been used over the years in many different ways. And uh, I don't want to get into that right now. Let's not confuse things. <clears throat> the new banking accounts are not going to be bank accounts. They're not going to be a checkbook. Uh, many of you know uh, Simon, who's on this channel a lot. He has his own show with Melissa, and they have a show called uh, Dip a Toe. And he has, Simon says, crypto. He's a good friend and a business partner of mine. He and I are working together with a how to become your own bank. Be your own banker, right? That is... All of that is changing. It's all evolving in the background. And what I'm excited to bring to you is one of the ways that you're going to be able to get out of having a bank account and into having a crypto account or crypto wallet that is now going to be your bank account. Let's just think and let's just say right now the stablecoin market is somewhere $150 billion dollars. So let's say Brad Garlinghouse is correct, okay? And he says, oh, $2 trillion within the next few years. That means $2 trillion worth of banking velocity around the world is going to be run through stablecoins. That velocity is now going to be associated and connected, like I've said for a long time on this channel, all banks will have their own stablecoins. All institutions will have their own stablecoins. Probably every nation will have their own stablecoins. But they're all going to want to link them to the strongest coin dollar denomination they can find. And like I said earlier, it's probably not going to be a commodity. It's probably going to be a group or a committee of people that are going to say, at least in the Western world, this is why there's two different games being played here. At least in the Western world, they're going to say, well, we're going to back it by the dollar and the strength of the, you know, the bond system is going away, in my opinion. It's going to take many years, but they're going to back it by those bonds and that hard paper asset to say that this is real. This is stable. This is the coin in which we're basing this on. So what that means to the little guys, they can trust it. But what it really does is it says once it's trusted to the point of a couple of trillion dollars, which is, I don't know, 10 times bigger than it is now at one and a half billion dollars, 150 billion dollars, that right there tells you that it's going to be massively liquid in ways that you and I can't even dream right now. The liquidity coming to that system has been planned for. This is exactly why the XRP coin was created, for liquidity. It's its strength. It's the beauty of the entire project that Ripple's been working on. All their staff, all their team working on exactly what they're trying to get done here is liquidity in the market in many different ways. But the big one. I, the AMMs are big. The DAX is big. Don't get me wrong. All of that is really cool ways for you to make money with your XRP coin. What I'm talking about is the stable coin. And that stable coin one day being the basis of all DeFi. And what other name is more trusted? Why have all the other DeFi's been beat up? Why have they all been brought into court by the SEC? All of a sudden, 
And I'm not saying it was conspiratorial or anything else. What I am saying is that Ripple pulled it off. And now they are deemed okay. They got the tip of the hat. They beat those people, the SEC in court. And now they're about to settle this $2 billion thing. And it could have settled by the time this gets posted, I hope. That is the future of banking. Now let's talk about what banking is. I talk about it on this show all the time. Banking does not evolve. It doesn't evolve ever. Like, think about it. My son and I talk about this all the time on our show. There's, what, two inventions in the history of banking? The debit card and online banking. That's it. And 100 years in this country of doing business, that's all they could come up with. They're not very innovative. Stablecoin is about to change all of that in ways that you can't even dream. You're going to be able to use your stable coin to go in and out of stocks because all stocks will be tokenized. In and out of all real estate because it'll be tokenized. All of that is more transferable and easier, more fluidity and more liquidity in a stable coin market. Easily done. So then what's going to happen, like I said, institutions are going to have their, all their own stable coins and you're going to be able to go freely in and out of their stable coins one to one because they're all going to be same, of same value. Not unlike USDC and Tether right now. But all of these different institutions are going to be essentially your bank account. Let's say you get a bank or an account at Merrill Lynch. Right? Your Merrill Lynch account's going to be able to freely say, okay, well, I want to pay my electric bill next month. Okay, boom, stable coin. I got to pay my mortgage, stable coin. Hey, I want to buy these ETFs, stable coin. I want to buy these NFTs. I want to buy more crypto. I want to buy anything. So the future of checking accounts is stable coins under the umbrella of institutions. And that's all institutions have ever wanted. They wanted their foot in the door. They didn't want to become obsolete. Do we need them? No. Do they want to still be part of the future in the game? Yes. Do they want their little scratch? Yes. That's why we're getting the, everybody dragging their heels in Washington, D.C. That's why regulation, in my opinion, isn't a good thing. I understand it makes people sleep better at night, but it's not why crypto was created. Created for you and I to beat the system in a, in a manner of be your own person, your own bank. I get it. People sleep better when they have a, a, a regulated system with rules and regulations. It's what it's come to. Do I believe it's perfect? No. Do I think it's happening? Obviously. And do I think that you better own some XRP instead of just a stable coin? Yes, you need to do that. That's my opinion only, not financial advice. But I want you to gather where this ball is going. This stable coin is going to be the future of your checkbook, your bank account. You're going to trade everything through it because you don't want to sell your XRP or your Bitcoin. You're going to want to sell fiat dollars. The, all the fiat dollars of the planet, no matter what country you're in, is going to run through that stable coin. I know, you guys probably had a lot of that figured out. But the difference is, when you want to become your own bank or your own banker, you're going to want something stable and you're going to want something liquid that you can pay your payments anywhere in the world with. And that's the key. That's why Ripple went global. They didn't pound on U.S. And that's why they got dragged into the SEC is because they were knocking down doors all around the world to connect the banking institutions of the entire globe so that you and I could freely trade with any human being on the planet within seconds. So, I know you, many of you knew a bunch of that, but I want you guys to grasp 
how big the stable coin is because I keep hearing people, well, I don't know why we need it. I don't know what, what use case it has. It has all the use case of every digit you've ever bought or sold or traded with your entire life is the future of where these are going. Isn't it interesting that all of a sudden our Congress, okay, are all these people are, are all on top of these coins. Oh, we got to get on top of stable coins. We got to get on top of, we need to regulate all of this. The banking institutions finally found a way for them to A, profit, and B, a way for them to stay relevant, which is who pays the politicians? They do, and they are in. And now you and I own the coins, and there's a cat trying to jump my lap, and we're going to have to end this because she's about to knock the camera over. Just a quick little hit on stable coins and XRP in the future is so bright, guys. For any of you who own those coins, good on you. You nailed it. Also, if you're going to be in Las Vegas, please, 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 there's going to be a link down below that uh, myself... Um, Melissa, Simon, my son Brent, my wife Elizabeth, we're having a get together with many other YouTube uh, providers who are just going to be at a meetup that is just a meet and greet. Hey, we're people flying into town and we're all going to have, uh, share some stories together and uh, be exciting to see everybody. And if you're going to be in Vegas, please come to my party. Uh, the link will be down below. And with that, I hope you guys are having a great weekend. And with that, I am out. Love you all.